I have already done a couple of videos on dependency injection, but one question always came up, how to do all of this with Microsoft.extension.dependency injection. That's exactly what we're going to see in this video. this might be the least impressive um, end result that I have so far in my videos because it just shows a hello string, um, which is of course, hello, hello, welcome, nice of you to be here. Um, but you know, the important thing is how this got here uh, because we're using Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection um, to actually inject a service uh, as an interface in our page model. And then our page model is binding this string to um, the UI. So that is what's really cool. Um, now a little um, word up front: if you haven't watched my video about um, dependency injection for absolute beginners, it should pop up on your screen or down in the video description below. Um, please watch that first. I highly recommend doing that first. So you know, all the terminology and all the stuff that's going on here. Um, so please check out that first, then pause this one, check that that one out, come back and it will all become clear to you. Now, let's stop talking about it and let's just go check out what this is all about. Okay, so here we are in a file new Xamarin Forms application. Actually, it's not entirely file new. I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. You can see here on the left XAML page that you get out of the box, it's running on the iOS simulator on the right. Um, and actually, let me show off the little XAML hot reload feature right here. So we're gonna name this DI um, sample, something like that. Um, so boom, you can see it up updates automatically on the iOS simulator, also works on physical devices, Android um, emulators, all the good stuff. So that's really cool. Um, now I said not entirely file new um, Xamarin Forms application because let's go over to our solution explorer right here. And what I already did is here under the dependencies, the nuggets, I already installed the Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection and Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection.abstractions. That's quite the mouthful, but um, those nuget packages are already installed and they provide us with the functionality to um, use dependency injection in a very easy way, very similar to how ASP.NET does it, uh, ASP.NET Core to be precise. Um, so that's very cool. If you already know the concepts there, then this is going to be pretty familiar for you. And the cool thing is, the really cool thing is that in .NET MAUI, this stuff will also work and it even has some stuff already built in. So if you want to know more about um, how .NET MAUI does it, how to do this with .NET MAUI specifically, please let me know down in the comments and I will make a video surely on that. So I've got that set up. And the other thing that I already did is here have the, let's make this a little bit um, smaller again, the myservice.cs. So this is just a very small sample service uh, with an interface. I just put them in the same file for now to make it all clear. Um, so public interface i my service with one method um, get string that returns a simple string. Um, and here the implementation my service um, implements i my service with the get string and just returns hello. So of course, if in a more real world scenario, this would be probably your class that would go out to your database or maybe your API backend and make HTTP calls, um, something like that. But here for this simple dependency injection um, sample, this is enough to um, get the point across. It doesn't really matter what the service does. Um, it there just has to be a service. So that is what I already have set up for you. Um, now let's just dive straight into our solution again. And I'm going to collapse some things here, the dependencies, we don't need to see that anymore. So right click on our shared service. Um, actually, one quick note on that dependency, the NuGets, um, those NuGets only have to be installed on the shared project. Um, there's no, you know, something that we need on iOS or Android specifically. So you just have to install them on your shared project. Um, and that is it. So Again, also on our shared project, let's add a little class here. So right click at new class, there we go. And I'm going to name this startup. And this startup class is already something that's in the template for dot and Maui application. So um, they already did some preparation for us. Now let's make this a public static class um, startup. There we go static class. And um, so that we can call this from everywhere in our application. And we have you know, this this very um, easy shortcut to get to this startup class to initialize some code and also to get to our dependency injection container basically. So what we then want to do is add a property here. So let's say public I service provider, service provider, there we go. Uh, and this is a property that we can use like I just mentioned to actually get um, Oops, it needs to be static as well. There we go. Uh, to get, you know, to that dependency injection container to um, retrieve the actual services that we've registered in here. Um, if you haven't done that already, 
please go check out the video on um, dependency injection for absolute beginners that I've made earlier. Um, I highly recommend that you watch it first so that you know all the terms that I'm, I'm using here. So um, it should pop up on your screen right now or down in the video description below. Um, and then after you watch that, just come back to this video and watch the rest of it. Um, and also we need this little public static um, I service provider init method here. Um, so actually I'm returning this service provider here. Uh, I'm not going to actually use it in this example in more um, extended um, examples, then you can definitely use the return value here to chain maybe this init method in more fluent way where you have multiple calls to different things. Um, I've linked some blog posts down in the video description below, uh, one by James Montemagno who does a little bit more extensive, um, also with this same code actually, so it should look pretty familiar, but he, he takes it one step further. Um, if something is not clear to you, again, let me know in the comments and I'll um, answer your question or make a little follow-up video for that. Now let's implement this init method right here. So what I'm gonna say is for service provider, um, so this, this is going to be our service provider is new um, service collection. So we have a service collection um, and that is going to be the collection of the services that we are going to register, right? So that's going to be our dependency injection container basically. And this is one that lives in the, um, so let's add that here to our usings, using, that's one that lives here in the microsoft.extension.dependencyinjections. So that's what we got from like the um, NuGet package that we've just added. And the iService provider, I think that is something that's built into the .NET framework that you can use for these kinds of things uh, that people can hook into. They can write their own implementation. As long as, you know, that interface is there, then .NET knows how to use basically your um, dependency injection container. So that's pretty cool. And with this service collection, um, I'm going to straight away say build service provider. So, you know, that's going to provide us with that service provider thing. And I'm also going to return that service provider here. There we go. So that we have this init method lined up. Um, and of course, what we want to do is um, assign it to this service provider property that we have here is service provider so that we can easily access it from the rest of our application and get the registered services out of there. Now what you would typically do in this service collection is here say dot add and here we can see the, the different lifetimes, the life cycles, um, scoped, singleton, transient, again that's explained in the uh, beginner video for dependency injection. Um, so um, here you can basically register your services. So what we could do is add singleton. So I could say I, my service right here, uh, my service, and then we would have registered the my service thing, right? Um, now there is a kind of little nicer way to do this maybe. Um, I don't know, you can group things together. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just listing all the things here, right? So um, I'm, I can add all the things here, um, but you know, to make it just a little bit more nicer, let's add a little um, different class that will also probably look familiar if you've used ASP.NET and, and that kind of stuff before. So I'm gonna add a little new class here, uh, which is going to be add new class, there we go. And well, name this whatever you want. I'm going to name this dependency injection um, container, let's name it something like that. And again, this is also going to be a public static class right here, whoops, static class. Uh, we don't need the constructor. And what I'm then going to say is public static I service collection. Uh, we need the using for that service collection. There we go, let IntelliSense fix this little thing here. There we go. And then we're going to say configure services, there we go. And I'm going to say this as a parameter, this I service collection um, services, there we go. So this is an extension method. Uh, we'll see in a little bit what that is exactly. This extends kind of like um, another object. So in this case, the I service collection, and we can just add this to our service collection and we can add this list of services that we want to configure right here. So we don't have to list them all in that init method. It will become clear in a little bit. Um, so here we get passed in the, the, the services. Um, there we go. And now I can just say add singleton right here, I my service, my service, right? So now I've moved this call and then I need to return this so that we can chain them together, the services. Um, so now I've moved this, this registration of my service to here. And then in the startup, I can remove this one uh, because you know, if you have a lot of services, this list can grow and grow. And then maybe this init method is not really that readable anymore. But because I made it an extension method, I can now say dot, um, 
configure services you can already see it show up here there we go and now you can see a more fluent way of doing things and you can maybe also have a configure i don't know something else build another extension method so that you cut it up a little and you have these little pieces that you um, can just configure here that way so here we have that one as well um, and now we're basically ready to inject our my service uh, but let's take it a step further before we actually do that we also, if you want to do this right, then you're probably using MVVM. Um, so we also want to work with view models, right? So let's add a view model for our little main page. Um, again, right click on our shared project and add new class. There we go. And let's name this one main page model. There we go. Now we have a main page model. Um, and in the constructor here, I'm just going to say I want to have the I my service. Um, my service there we go so this is going to inject here into our constructor our my service and we want to do that of course with um, you know the least effort possible and of course to show you that it actually works um, let's just add a property here so public string um, injected injected string um, get set so that we have a little property that we can data bind in the UI uh, and I'm going to set this injected string with the my service dot get string so there we go now we have this service actually getting the string for me and assigning that to a property of this uh, page model now what we want to do with this page model is we also want to register this in our um, dependency injection container so Technically, this is not a service, so configure services. I mean, you could already split this out into, actually, let's just do that. So let me copy this one and say configure, um, there we go, view models. So you can see, you can just add a new extension method like this. And I'm going to add this as a uh, transient one. So add transient, there we go. And you can also use this with a concrete type. So I can just say main, page model there we go and it will instantiate that main page model and it will go look you can see i don't specify any constructor parameters right but it, because it will go look in this services collection like hey do i already have a registration for the my services the, the my service yes i do so i'm going to inject that in the constructor and that's what makes this so powerful you just have to add that new registration here to the list and it will automatically figure out where to inject it into constructors and that kind of stuff so that is what makes this really really cool now with this in place we also need to add this of course to our startup cs right here so let's go to our startup cs we already have the configure services and what we can now also say is configure view models here we go um, of course you know you're free to do that in the configure services as well configure view models you can specify them any way you want um, that makes sense to you and fits into your code base so um, don't worry about that um, so that we have set up. So we have our dependency container right here. Um, and now there's two things I think we still need to do. We need to call that startup.init. So let's go to our solution, um, our app XAML, app XAML CS. Um, there we go. And we want to um, here say startup dot init so we actually you know call that code and our uh, dependency injection container gets built up right so that's done um, and the other thing we want to do is of course you know in our main page um, actually set that main page model now also this is something that you would ideally want to have um, resolved automatically um, which you can definitely do um, again, if you go to um, James Montemagno's blog post, there is a way to dependency inject your whole app. So all the dependencies get resolved automatically, which is really crazy if they think about it. Um, so go check out that blog post. It's too much for this one video. Um, but if you can't figure it out or you have any questions about that, please let me know. And I will definitely make a video on that because it's pretty cool stuff. Um, for now, we're going to do it different. So let's go to our solution, our main page XAML CS. Um, and typically what you would do, right, is say binding context is new main page model, right? But that's not what we want to do because now we have this new main page model and we still, we also need to say new my service. So now we're creating all kinds of new um, um, references and we don't want to do that because if my service um, changes its implementation or its name, then we now have to go through all the new my service uh, all through our code and we have to change all of them, which is not what we want. We want to inject the uh, dependency like that and not worry about all of that. So what we can now do here is go to our startup class as well to our service provider and we can say get service for our i my service there we go now this will show a little syntax error right here which is with 
can be weird. So you really have to make sure that you're doing here the using Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Um, and then it will show up because this is also an um, extension method that lives in this um, NuGet package that we installed. So make sure that you reference that one to um, don't have any errors here. And now it will resolve that binding context from our um, services collection and it will inject automatically all the things. Actually, I'm doing something wrong here because I don't want to get this service because I want to have the binding context. So I should have the main page model here. There we go. That's the actual thing that we want. And it's going to resolve the main page model. It's going to see that it needs something in the constructor, namely the my um, service, and it's going to inject that. And we're going to see actually um, on the UI our um, string that comes from that service. Actually, then there's one thing that we still need to do in our main page.xaml. We actually have to, you know, remove all of this. We don't need all this. And then just in this one label, we're going to say binding injected injected string. There we go. So now we have this property injected string. We don't see anything right now because I changed a whole lot of code. So let me stop and quickly restart this application right here. And then we should see show up our injected string um, be, through all of our dependency injection containers and whatnot. And that is in a nutshell how to set up um, dependency injection with the Microsoft.extension.dependency injection. And here we go, boom, we have a hello. So what happened is um, I've, I've already mentioned it a couple of times. Um, here in our app example CS, we have our little startup.init. The startup.init configures the services, configures the view models that happens here. So it adds it to our services collection, the main page model, um, the, the service. And then here in our main page XAML CS, we set the binding context by resolving it from our dependency injection container. And it injects automatically here in this main page model, it injects this service um, and then assigns the value to our property that we have in this main page model. So that is really, really cool stuff. Very powerful for stuff to play with. Now, one thing that I want to um, also mention before I let you get to it and get started on your own is that there is a lot of cool um, packages out there that will allow you to um, add all kinds of dependencies automatically. So you don't have to do that yourself. So if we go to our shared project again, and we do manage NuGet packages, and we then search for Microsoft.extensions, then there's already a lot of those. Um, so here you can see um, logging. So you can do something with logging out of the box as well. I think there should be also one, here you go, caching, um, file providers, whatnot, whatever you can come up with basically. And also one that's probably very handy for you is the extensions.htp. So that will automatically inject the HTTP client for you that you can use. Um, so, you know, you can just add this package um, add it to your init method, uh, method uh, where you say just at HTTP, I think it's literally that. Um, and then you suddenly have this HTTP client that you can inject everywhere and that you can use. And that's how to work with the Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection in Xamarin Forms and also a little bit in .NET MAUI. Now there are some moving parts here, so I hope it was all clear to you. Um, of course, the sample code is all on a repository and the link you can find down in the video description below, just as the blog post that I've already mentioned a couple of times with more um, elaborate samples or you know a text description, if that's what you prefer more. Um, and you can use this in all kinds of scenarios. So you can build upon this with also like the fresh MVVM that I've made videos about. So, you know, with the MVVM framework. Um, and this is also going to be roughly the way that it's implemented in .NET MAUI. So um, again, if you want to see anything specific about this, please let me know in the comments and I will um, answer your question or maybe do another follow up video on that because you know, I just love making you happy. That's why I'm doing this. Um, speaking of which, if you want to make me happy a little bit as well, um, please click that like button if you've liked this video and check if you've subscribed to my channel already. Um, so click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, maybe the little bell to be notified of new content automatically and for the rest, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.